Good morning. This is a uh, Monday at noon time. We're getting ready for our mission lesson. And we're going to be kind of brief. And I will read from our scripture text. I will pray. I have, after I read from my scripture text will be Proverbs 3. And I will start at verse 1 and go through verse 10. And it reads as follows, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall be, shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about in thy neck. Write them upon the tablets of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be helped to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Shall we pray? Father God, we pause just to say thank you. We pause to say thank you for your love, your kindness, grace, and your mercy. We Paul to say thank you because of who you are, what you has done and is continuing to do in the lives of humanity and especially believers. Father, we just wanna say thank you for allowing us to come with the mind to study your word. Yes, it sounds called mission. And we are on a mission for you to tell the a dying world about a risen savior. And Father, this lesson is so befitting today that we are encouraging us all to trust in you. And Father, I just thank you in advance for answering this prayer as I pray it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Uh, beginning our mission lesson this morning, it is the name, the title of it is Trust in the Lord. And it is taken from Proverbs three, five, and six. And to what we objected here today is to encourage all to inform us the main reason why we should trust God and that he is worthy of our trust. So in preparing me some notes, I asked a question that I'll try and answer and provide some helpful insights as to why we must trust in the Lord. And what does it mean for us to trust in the Lord? First of all, trusting in the Lord is that we are acknowledged that he is all sovereign, he's all powerful, and he is the God who created all creation. He is the God who sustains all creation. That's one reason to trust him. Another reason to trust him is that his knowledge and wisdom supersedes that of mankind. Even in our most achieved wisdom and knowledge, it is still compelled in comparison to God. That's why we trust him. Then we trust him because he is loving, he's kind, and he's compassionate. And he's true to his word when he said, I will never leave you nor forsake his own. And everything that we need, God has so graciously, graciously provided. So why not trust him? In the time of need, he is an ever present help in trouble. Then I, I, I our text tells us very plainly. 
We must trust God with our whole heart because it is the opposition of doubt. And when we can trust God in the most dire situations, it shows that we are honoring him or acknowledging his sovereign power because he, we already know or we feel within our hearts that he can do anything but fail. And I am a living witness to the fact that I have come and live long enough and can praise him for bringing me through situation or answering prayers that he is a trustworthy God. And when we can really trust him in dire situations, because really we don't have anybody else but God who will come to our neediest rescue. Not that he doesn't rescue us from small needs, but he is our rescue world. We have, we are demonstrating our total confidence in him. That's what we can do when we trust in him and he's, he's encouraging us to trust in him. Then, then uh, to trust God is fundamental to the Christian belief. Because when we have faith, we have trust. And we have trust, we have confidence. And we know as I've said earlier, there is no failure in God. And also, I've also stated that I just want to reiterate that when we can trust God in every situation, it shows that we are acknowledging who he is and we are solidifying our relationship with him because we recognize the fact that we are created in his image and likeness, and we are dependent upon him. We are not created to be independent from him, but dependent upon him. And when we can really trust in him in every situation of our lives, in every aspect of our life, it shows that we have a relationship with him and we know that, that he will stick closer to us than a brother or sister. He's there when all else fails. He's just that dependable. And we also must, if we have not gotten to that point, that we can trust him in our most dire situations. Let me just look at it from this situ uh, this uh, example. Here we are in the middle of a, a storm. Uh, let's just um, say this. Say when there's a physical storm I'm talking about now. We have had some storms here and today the people in New Orleans and those Southern states and I know different parts of New Orleans, Louisiana and, they, and New, Orleans, New Orleans. They are reeling from Hurricane Ida, total destruction. Thus far, I haven't heard of any lives being lost. And what the point that I'm trying to make, that there was trust in him and they believed that they would survive the storm. And there being no lives lost. Yeah, there's a lot of property damage. And I've saw pictures of the water up to certain levels. God's merciful care and taking care of those people. And even in the midst of the storm that had ravaged this city, and this city meaning Redford, Michigan, Detroit, there were many storms. So many lost power and different things that are the, the, the amenities that we have come to the rely on. But through it all, God took care of us. And I'm still talking about trusting in God 
and not lean into our own understanding. I'm going to get to that part too, but I just want to try to emphasize the fact that we must trust God daily in every situation and every aspect of our life because he is trustworthy and he has proven himself to be trustworthy. And, and he, has, he has not failed us yet in whatever the situation is. And when we can go to God in prayer and make our request known to him when we are in need of something, but we are in need of his protection all the time. And when we can, I always, I always tell you, just take a moment and say, thank you, God. Just thank you for who he is and who he has been and who he will be because he's all sovereign. And Psalms 23 and one said, the Lord is, not was or will be, but he is our shepherd. And what the shepherd does is take care of his sheep. Therefore, we can trust in God in every situation, daily, every moment of the day of our life, okay? Uh, another component of verse five, and it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Then he tells us this, and lean not unto our own understanding. And I may have alluded to it moments ago when I said, when we trust God, we are recognizing and acknowledge of his sovereignty. And I may have said that, and leaning not to our own understanding, because his wisdom and knowledge far supersedes that the knowledge that we have. See, God is all knowing. We know to know in part. So why not seek his understanding and try to go it alone? But let me just say it this way. When we um, refrain from leaning to our own understanding and then trusting God and seeking his wisdom and knowledge. We, that's another form of uh, example of trusting in God. I just want to make that clear. When we refrain from trusting and leaning to our own understanding, instead seeking God's wisdom and knowledge is another example of us trusting God in all that we do. Okay, now, why? Uh, let me point out another reason why we should refrain from trusting and uh, leaning to our own understanding. Because, one, I've already alluded to the fact that it is limited, our knowledge is limited compared to God, then it's fallible, meaning that it is prone to make, uh, make mistakes in our thinking. When we think we might be doing right, but we, it might be off from what God says. That's why it's so important to seek God and his understanding, his knowledge, because he's always right. He always knows what's best, and he will always direct us in the right way. His knowledge far supersedes our knowledge. Okay. Then when we grow or at the point that we can seek God instead of leaning to our own understanding, we are enlightened by God's word and his spirit. Now, when we, let me give you another approach to this. And I'm taking my own little time. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not gonna take all day, but uh, when we, I mean, I'm just trying to explain why, what does it mean for us to trust in the Lord? It means everything. Why 
And I know I've already answered the question, why or what do it mean to lean to trust in him? And why we must trust in him because he's all known. The point I wanna make here is that, and I'm talking about the relationship that we have when we can uh, lean on God's understanding rather than ours. We have that relationship and we have learned to trust him in all that we do and acknowledge him because of his sovereign power. There is no God who is sovereign other than the God of Almighty, okay? And then also it means that we are acknowledging that our limited wisdom and knowledge is pale, and I know I've said that, in comparison to God, we just no match. But a wise person will seek God first in every endeavor he or she may undertake and follow his direction because if what we are trying or in our endeavor is different from God or does not align with God's will, then we can come short of what our success might be. So it is prudent, it is wise, to seek God and his understanding instead of leaning to our own understanding. That's the sign of a wise person because we, we're recognizing that godly wisdom is far better than ours. Okay. And let me try to get to another point here, verse six. And he's asked us, he said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Let me just kind of put a pin right there. He said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs, is in telling us and advising us and encouraging us, regardless of what we do or what we undertake, we seek God first. And he said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And when we can come to a point in our life, in our Christian life, or in a, if we are non-believing, come to the point of his sovereignty that we can acknowledge him for who he is and whatever is we are getting ready to do, whatever plans we make, whatever decisions we are about to make and whatever activities we about to undertake. And I know I probably alluded to it early. We always acknowledge him by going to him in prayer laying it out before him. Yeah, he's all knowing and he knows this, but what we are thinking and, and what we, uh, because he told us and uh, what Jeremiah said, I know your thoughts. And God knows more about us than we do. But when we can acknowledge him is a form of honor and reverence and respect to God for who he is. And I know I told you this, he is all knowing. So then why not acknowledge him? We didn't create nothing. He is the creator and sustainer of everything that we see and all that we don't see. So why not acknowledge him? In all that in all of our ways, everything that we get ready to do. Take it to the Lord in prayer and ask him, God, if that thine will be done, if what I'm about to do does not align up with your will, direct me, direct my path so I won't error. Even in 
uh, let me say it this way. If we are beginning uh, to start a business, we lay out our plan, go to God in prayer and ask him for his approval. And whatever he tells you or us, then be willing to make the adjustment. Why? Because he is all knowing. He loves us so much. He wants us to be successful in our earthly daily activities and endeavors. And he certainly wants us to be successful in our faith walk. So even then, we seek God in prayer and ask him in doing our daily activities to direct our path. And, and then so we won't have to lean to our own understanding. Whatever I'm planning today, Lord, if there's some parts of this activity, my daily activity, that you want to adjust, I'm willing to buy by your adjustment. That's it's an acknowledgement him of for his sovereign power and who he is. He's truly all known. And he has all power. Okay, so let me get to the part of the other part that I've made, just mentioned. And he shall, and he said, and he shall direct thy path. He does that because of his love for humanity. We are his prized creation. We are the apple of his eye. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And he said, whosoever, and that's all inclusive, believe in him, shall, that's God's guarantee. He didn't say might, he didn't say maybe, he said you shall be saved. And in here in this verse, he said, he shall direct thy path. In other words, that's his guarantee. When you acknowledge God, he's certainly going to lead you in the right way because of his love. Like I told you, he wants the best for us and you, we will have the best that he has to offer us if we acknowledge him and follow him in all things that we do because he is just that kind of God. Let me uh, see if I can give you an example. And it's brought out in what he was talking about faith, but our faith and our trust goes together. When Jesus was doing his earthly ministry, he had come to a point that he had been ministering and he was uh, getting ready to go over to the other side of the sea and he, the disciples, and he went on down in the boat to go to sleep to get him some rest. There come a turbulent storm and the disciples became fearful and they couldn't handle to get the water out the boat fast enough because they thought it was gonna sink and they were gonna perish. But when they couldn't do go any further, they got to the point, they knew that Jesus was on board and they called on Jesus. Then, and I'm trying to make the point here they knew who to call on, who had the power and the authority to speak to the wind. They trusted him enough to know that when they go to him, went to him, they would be saved. And what the, you say, I said, okay, now, so teach what's your point? My point is this. We must never forget who God is. He's all sovereign. And we must never, ever, fail to trust him because he is trustworthy. And I know I've said that two or three times, but and, I, and I'm not complaining about being repetitive because I'm trying to get a point across. I'm trying to make the, point, uh, this, um, the um, importance of trusting God. Every situation, there has been some personal, I can venture to say there has been some personal situation in our lives because life has storms that we have had to call on God. Yeah, we have tried to get the water out of our own sinking boats, and we couldn't, not fast enough. 
But once we called on Jesus, he stepped in and calmed the turbulent ways in our lives and said, peace, be still. That's our trusting in God to know that he will stay forward and make a way for us, take care of us, supply all our needs. Let me put our trust in another way. Say that you have no groceries in the house, but you have took the situation to God. You go on preparing your table, setting a table, because you know that God, the God that you serve, is an on time God, and there's no failure in Him. And by the time you get the table set, there come a knock at the door the groceries. No, it may not be filet mignon or salmon or lobster but it's food that'll satisfy your hunger. What's my point? You prepared your table, trusting God with your total being that he is true to his word, that he will provide for everything you need. Trust in God. Let me give you another example. Them trying to demonstrate trust Yes, you have lost your job and you don't know how you're going to meet your financial obligations, but you take it to the Lord in prayer. Again, remember what he said, that I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory through who his son Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you without a shadow of a doubt, if you trust in God with your whole being, he will make a way. He certainly will make a way. We just have to trust him, knowing that there is no failure in him. And I want to maybe see about uh, I started to say close, but I'm not really trying. I'm really not read just not this minute. I want to close, but what I want to say is, we honor God when we trust Him. We honor Him when we seek His knowledge and understanding. We honor Him when we allow Him to direct our path because we really don't know the way. And if he wasn't directing our path, we would be wandering in the wilderness. But when you allow him to direct your path, point out the direction you should go, then guess what? It's a straight line between point A and point B. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and what he will do. And if we can acknowledge his ways, he will direct our path. God is not a liar and he's true to his word. We always want to honor God because of who he is. And what he has, is, and will do in our life. And I know verse 9 tells us that we honor God with our substance and the first fruits of our labor, our increase. When we can take and pay God his 10%, he always asks us for his 10%. And this is still talking about trust. Because when I can trust him with him and my 90 cents, then I have more with him than I do when I fail to give him his 10%. We have to trust God all the time. 
I used to hear this old deacon in our church. He's deceased now. Talking, about, he was talking about tithe, but the tithe is a tithe. Giving God His portion first is a faith, obedience, and trust. Because you're trusting Him to make up the difference of what that ten percent left off. Because I'm gonna say to you again, when you have God. And that 90%, you have more with God than you do without him. All we have to do is just trust, believe, and act on our faith. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, you will never, ever go wrong. Trust God. And let me tell you that when you put God first and you trust him, and in verse 10, and I'm going to read it, when you give him his first, he said, you shall have bond to be feared with plenty that is pressed down, shall burst out at the sink. You'll have more than you need. And when, let me just take it to the spirit. When we trust God, and thank him and honor him and reverence him. And because he anoints us daily with the grace, with his grace and mercy. And he fills us so that our cups runs over. Put God first. Just try God once a while, in a while. Just try. But total trust. You don't have to believe me. Try them for yourself. I've tried it. See, I already personally know what he'll do. And I'm going to close with this. Our trust in God. We will never lack anything. Our trust in God. We will never lack anything. And that concludes our lesson. Let me pray. Kind Father, thank you for the lesson. Praying that whoever hears will be inspired to trust you in every situation and all that we do because you are a trustworthy God and there is no failure in you. And then, Father, let touch their minds and their hearts to know that when they trust in you, they are honoring you for who you are and your ability to provide everything they need. Lord, I'm praying this prayer in the authoritative name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. I'm going to close with our pledge, the mission pledge, and it reads as follows. I pledge by daily reading, meditation, and communion with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to live an upright life, to practice his teaching in my dealings with my fellow man, to dedicate my talent and give up my time, influence, and means to teaching of spreading the Christian religion at home and abroad, to win souls through personal service for Christ, to encourage and to help and the enlistment of young people in the Christian work, and to make my home a center of Christian light and love. To these ends, I pledge to devote myself and to seek divine aid and guidance daily that I might become a living witness and a bright and shining light for my Lord.